everyone. This is Marley here with Duke Schnauzers in Middle Tennessee. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. Super happy to have you guys. We are crazy about miniature schnauzers here. So if you like miniature schnauzers as well, or you enjoy watching videos of cute little miniature schnauzer puppies or learning more about miniature schnauzers and how to optimize their health and just give them the best life, I definitely suggest you hit that subscribe button because I will be uploading content for you guys. Um, today with me, first and foremost, I have to introduce Eminem. She is my last puppy from my summer litters. She's from Ava and Arlo, and she is a beautiful recessive red little girl with one blue eye and one brown eye, and she is available. She is gorgeous, and I do believe her coat is going to intensify a little bit and get a bit darker. I'm going to tap my screen real quick. There we go. Um, and she's fabulous and so chill, so we're hanging out. And then also, I sound horrible. The wind has picked up. It is fall in Tennessee. It's beautiful, it's amazing, but it makes me sound like this, like I've smoked two packs of cigarettes. I promise I haven't, um, but yeah, so I apologize. But today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about something that I think is super important that I've never spoken about really before. Um, and I don't think that puppy parents necessarily think about this prior to getting a puppy, and so I think it's a good piece of intel for a breeder to share. So when most people consider getting a puppy and like when people contact me, one of the things I get asked the most is what do I do in terms of socialization? You wanna make sure you get a dog that's socialized. You want your puppy to be socialized. And so that is super important, which is why I have a whole puppy culture curriculum that's day by day that we work with the puppies and we socialize them and expose them to different auditory, visual and tactile stimuli. Um, but there's something that's just as important, which is explaining the developments of these puppies in regards to um, what the transitionary period looks like when these puppies leave us. So what you guys are gonna expect as puppy parents taking a puppy home, whether it's a miniature schnauzer or any other type of puppy, what that realistically is going to look like. And to kind of do, to start with a self-assessment to see if you're at the right season of your life to take this on, um, puppies are babies and so it can be a lot of work. So just a bit of background, as everybody knows, the canine, the domesticated canine is a descendant of the wolf. They and wolves have a pack mentality. Through the years, you know, dogs have gotten less aggressive. They've become man's best friend, which all comes from this pack mentality. They start with their litter mates, with their mom, um, and she sees a car. Um, and then they go to their home with their families. And if there's other dogs, they join that pack. And if it's just humans, the humans kind of become their pack. So it definitely serves a purpose, but um, something that's important for puppy parents who are you know interested in the process to consider is do they have the time necessary to properly help this puppy transition to their new home? Um, and keeping in mind that these, you know, puppies come from homes where they were bred or, um, you know, they're raised and they have between four to seven, maybe even eight litter mates to play with all the time. So these puppies are getting stimuli from these different, um, from their litter mates all the time. And then they conk out, they fall asleep, but they're used to that. And just as how it would be stressful for you or I to just pick up and move one day and go to a brand new house and have a new family and you know have everything be different, it's just as stressful for these dogs. And so that's something that um, I think buyers need to be aware of and really do a self-assessment and figure out, am I okay with having you know, a puppy that may transition a little more difficultly um, and you know, just taking it in that, you know, while most puppies kind of go through it mostly seamlessly there are some puppies that are going to require more work but knowing that it is a hundred percent worth it if once you get through that phase so puppies can't talk obviously i know i wish they could but the way they communicate with us is through whining and when puppies are unhappy they're hurt when they're scared anxious anything they will whine um, and so first and foremost, what I recommend for buyers to do when they bring home a new puppy, if their puppy is whining a lot, is to assess the situation and see what's going on. Does the puppy have water? Has the puppy been fed? Does the puppy need to go potty? Or is the puppy just looking for attention? You wanna really go through these hierarchy of needs to see what, to kind of determine what your next best step is gonna be. Um, if the puppy needs water, give them water. If the puppy needs to go potty, never a bad idea to take a puppy potty they have very small bladders, chances are they will go. Um, and when you are engaging with your puppy, set a plan and kind of get everything ready 
as to what that is going to look like for your day-to-day -day life. Puppies, again, they came from pack mentality. They have that pack mentality. They're used to siblings all around them. So they're not gonna be happy if they're just put inside a pen with a crate in it and left there for you know hours at a time and they're not out and about with their new family. And you especially want your puppy, going, kind of going back to socialization a little bit, um, you want your puppy to be following you around the house, walking with you, you know, discovering new areas, feeling confident and feeling comfortable. That all is gonna make the transition easier. Um, puppies thrive with crate training. I know it can be tricky and challenging in the beginning. And here at Dukes, we do do a little bit of it, but not terribly much. We can't do more than 30 minutes at a time with these puppies because it's just, it's not the proper environment for them to be fully crate trained when they have their litter mates. I want the, my puppies to have their exposure to um, their litter mates and kind of get that interaction so they can learn boundaries. Um, but when the puppy comes home, completely different story. So something that I will do, um, cause I know puppies crying at night, no buyer wants to have to go through that. But something for me that's always helped is your breeder should be sending the puppy home with something that smells like their litter mates. Um, they have heartbeat little dogs. I send those home with my all of my puppies. Those work really well. And then also I put the puppy in a crate. And as hard as it is to not put the puppy in bed with you, I put the puppy in the crate and I actually will elevate the crate to like my bed's level so I can stick my fingers in there. So the puppy smells, feels comfortable with me um, and knows that they're not alone because that's the whole purpose of crate training is it's a small space. The puppy knows that they're gonna be safe there. It just takes a little bit for them to get used to it. And nothing wrong with putting in some you know, bones in there, um, toys, nothing like that. That's not gonna harm anything. It's, it's actually only gonna help. And prior to that first evening, have that crate out and about at your house. Have it in the open. Don't have it just be in the pen where the puppy can't access it. You want them to feel comfortable and not just be thrown into something completely unknown and expect to deliver perfect results. Something else that is super helpful, which again, puppies play with each other nonstop when they're with their litter mates. You need to be prepared to tire this baby out. Um, they have tons of interactive toys. They have toys that move. They have toys that will start, then stop, light up, they'll make noise. All those are great. Um, lick mats are great as well. Um, you just kind of have to be careful with what you put on them a little bit because you don't want to cause your puppy to have an upset tummy. Upset tummy. Um, and then I forgot what else I was going to say. Lick mats, um, toys. Oh, snuffle mats are great. You can put in little treats in there and just something to occupy your puppy and to keep them um, you know, engaged and to tire them out playing, you know, playing with them, letting them run around, chase them, you know, let them chase you. If you have other dogs, you've got basically built in buddy right there. Um, all of those will help your puppy because they will be fatigued after they have a long session of playtime. And I think it's really important to say that when puppies transition to their new home, um, a puppy that's put in an enclosure and that's where they spend 95% of their time, it's gonna be really hard for that puppy. You're probably not gonna get the desired outcome that you want for the um, personality of that dog. These, these dogs, again, their pack mentality, they need to be around people, they need to be held, touched, and really should only be put in the pen when you know, you're gone or when, um, you know, safety is a factor. What else can I tell you? Um, going back to puppies chewing on bones, chews, toys, stuff like that. And this kind of also coincides a little bit with lick mats is that um, dogs, when they use their mouth, when they chew, not only for puppies, when they're teething, it feels good to chew on something because they're teething, but it also um, tells their body to release oxytocin, the feel good hormone. So it actually makes them happy. So giving your dog, your puppy, something to chew on when they're go while they're going through this transitionary period, while you're putting them in the pen or the crate is really gonna help because it's gonna make them feel happy and it's gonna decrease anxiety. Um, something else, and this one is super, super hard and there's definitely conflicting information out there if you look it up, is what do you do when you have a puppy that whines? What do you do? I think if any of us are, um, you know, you want to do what's best for the puppy and it can feel so hard to let the puppy cry. I am in the camp of when it comes to dogs, if I give a negative behavior attention, the dog is going to continue to do it. And I don't feel like it's any different with the puppy. And trust me, as a breeder who's brought in dogs and as someone who grew up doing this and as somebody who's had a lot of dogs and puppies, I know 
that if I have a puppy who's whining, when it's a perfectly appropriate time for them to be okay and by themselves, if I pick them up and take them out, they're just gonna continue to do this. You gotta ignore it. And yes, it is gonna be annoying. Get some earbuds, get some earplugs, you know the puppy's safe, and just kind of let them go through the process. Um, and that is probably my absolute biggest piece of advice is do not give in to temptation to soothe the puppy when you've already verified that they're safe and they're okay. These, these puppies need to learn to self-soothe and they're going through a transition and it's not necessarily going to be the easiest thing in the world. Um, but I mean, sometimes it is most of the time I feel like it's, you know, a couple of days, but it can be a little bit longer. And I think that that is definitely true, not just for puppies, but like for rescue dogs and older dogs. And going back to what I said before, just like if it were you or I, and we were displaced into a brand new home with a new family, we'd be like, oh my gosh, you would be in fight or flight mode, like all the time. So um, those are some of my biggest suggestions that I can think of. And um, just anybody who's going through this, be gentle with yourself. Don't take it personally. Um, hang in there. <laughs> I have definitely been there. Um, Rowan, our really dark, dark, dark red boy was um, incredibly difficult with his transition. He had loose stool with it. I'm going into so much detail. He was just, I swear that boy slept next to my bed for like three and a half months in his crate until he could be down lower, but we stuck with it and he is an amazing dog. So there's definitely um, that's a testament to the fact that it does work. Just trust the process. And if you have any questions, reach out to your breeder. All right, guys, have a good day. And I think I'm going to put this little girl back in her area so she can go to sleep.